You're listening to an archived Cabral Concept podcast. After listening to this show, check out the most up-to-date podcasts available at stephencabral.com slash podcasts or search directly on iTunes. And now, welcome to the Cabral Concept, where board-certified naturopath and integrative health practitioner, Dr. Stephen Cabral, shares how he was diagnosed at the age of 17 with a life-altering illness and given no hope for recovery. It was only after studying and traveling all over the world did he discover how to combine ancient Ayurvedic healing practices with state-of-the-art naturopathic and functional medicine to fully rebalance the body and re-energize it with life. It's time to discover how to get well, lose weight, and finally feel alive again. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Cabral. I'm Stephen Cabral, and I just finished up with about 10 hours of consultations today. Half of those being um, Skype, where I got to speak with people in Texas, and I got to speak with someone in the UK, someone in New York, and then, of course, in my Boston practice as well, seeing people. And, you know, really, it's these types of actual face to face meetings, whether it be through Skype video, whether it be with someone in my practice that really energizes me to continue to promote this message, this message that all of us share of overall health and well-being and not giving up. That was the big thing that I saw today is that most people, before they have come to see me, they've seen half a dozen other specialists and doctors minimum. They've tried different diet plans. And yet, even though they've so-called failed, and I'll put that in air quotes, they still push forward. That is the sign of someone that will inevitably succeed. And honestly, that is why if I can just get you to get you to that starting line, to start to make those changes, to move you in the right direction, I have no doubt that whether it's a wellness-based issue, autoimmune issue, digestive issue, weight loss issue, anti-aging based issue, you're going to achieve it. You just need to keep putting in the work just day after day, not hard work, but just smart work, moving in the right direction. And that's why when I did a podcast a couple weeks ago, on CBD oil. I never expected, never in my wildest dreams did I expect that to really fire off this massive interest into what is this thing called cannabinoids or cannabidiol. That's this thing called CBD for short. I never expected to be doing another podcast for at least a couple months on it. We've never gotten more questions in a shorter period of time to talk more about it, the healing properties, how people are getting well. Can it really be that great? So my job is to listen far more than I speak, although I do talk a lot, far more than I speak, I try to listen. I want to know what people want to know more about. I want to know how I can help them, how I can best be of service. Because honestly, my job is not to make people fit into a cookie cutter based protocol. It's to personalize things for them, is to help them get well. But in order to do that, I need to know how I can help them. But there's this interesting thing with a few products, magnesium being one of those, CBD being one of those, B vitamins being one of those, that these products are things that most people can do well on. I'm not going to rehash last Tuesday's show. That was on, uh, let me see if I can get the number for you specifically, but it was called What Drug Companies Don't Want You to Know About CBD Oil. And again, that was the show that kind of sparked everything, that really got the interest going, I mean, really remarkable, really amazing of what the outcry and interest was because so many other people had been wanting to know about it, wondering if they could trust the information. I just gave you the simple science. And then I linked up to our show notes page, which also just shows you all of the benefits. So do keep in mind, again, I won't go through that show, but uh, what I want to do today is I want to actually give you, I want to answer a lot of those questions, the frequently asked questions. When to use CBD oil? Who's it best for? How many times per day can you use it? And give you the research on the cancer, the anxiety, but really people using it for fibromyalgia, menstrual-based issues, PMS, nausea, arthritis, OCD, autism, epilepsy. Epilepsy is a huge one. Seizures in general, Alzheimer's, dementia, brain-based issues, cognitive issues, depression, ADHD, ADD, chronic pain, anything inflammatory-based. If you have an inflammatory-based condition, cannabinoids or cannabis has been shown to help with that. But then people ask, well, what's the difference between smoking marijuana or cannabis, whatever you want to call it, or weed and CBD? Well, the difference is this, is that there's no psychoactive components because there's less than 0.5 milligrams of THC in 
in the CBD oil, the cannabinoids. The cannabinoids are what we're really extracting. So again, the company that I use is just out of Colorado. They use organic only cannabis, which is very, very important. And they use a CO2 extraction method, which makes it five times more potent than the same cost as any other product out there, but they just use it to much like a much higher degree. And that's really what it's you know all about is just getting you the best product possible to get you the to maximize your results. So what happens is you don't get the high, you don't get the psychoactive components, but you get all of the benefits. So you get the anti-anxiety, you get all of those things that I'm about to talk about. But what I want to tell you is that THC, so meaning like marijuana will give you this, meaning like it will give you the some of the protection against cancer, the anti-nausea, the anti-pain, the antidepressant, the anti-spasms, the antimicrobial, the muscle relaxant, the protection of the nervous system, the lowering of Crohn's disease and IBS, the lowering of inflammation, and the lowering of antioxidants. It will do that, but CBD oil does the same exact thing. So you can't escape that. Meaning like the only thing that THC has been shown to do that CBD has not been shown to is that um, THC increases appetite and it's also more antimicrobial. Okay. But CBD oil does everything else I just mentioned. Plus it does a lot of things that THC, which is the psychoactive component of marijuana, CBD oil does have other antibacterial properties. So instead of antimicrobial, antibacterial, it's also better for blood sugar. It also improves circulation, meaning like blood pressure and um, cardiovascular. It helps relieve psoriasis. It helps with bone growth. It helps with autoimmune issues such as rheumatoid arthritis. It is in itself an antipsychotic, meaning that for mood-based issues. And it also helps with sleep in a positive manner. Okay. So you can go to the website. I'll just link it up in the show notes today. I don't want to just land you on a specific page. So just check out stephencabral.com forward slash 466. We'll put everything in, in the uh, notes. But I went through it before. I, I, you know, just a quick list helping with stress, with sleep disorders, with skin issues, with schizophrenia, autoimmune based issues, OCD, obesity, neurologic based pain, so nervous system based pain, mood, motion system, nausea, inflammation irritable bowel, heart disease, glaucoma, fibromyalgia, seizures, hormone disruption, diabetes, depression, Crohn's, colitis, cancer, bipolar, autism, asthma, arthritis, anxiety, anorexia, antibiotic resistance, Alzheimer's, ALS, AIDS, addiction, especially with alcohol-based addiction, acne, skin-based issues in general. So you say, how can a list be this big? And like, is this really true? Well, yes, the research is there. The data is there. All of these things have been scientifically verified, which is why drug companies are scrambling to make synthetic versions that they can patent of marijuana, of THC, and of CBD and all the different CBD strains. So you can see that these things actually work. They're on PubMed. They are on legitimate peer-reviewed websites. And I would like to just give you a couple of those today. So this is, I mean, again, this this show is dedicated to all of you. It's, It's dedicated to our community. So Right now, some of the biggest questions were about cancer, were about inflammation, and were about anxiety. And I want to go over those right now before I give you how to take CBD to get the most benefit. So right now, in terms of cancer, again, you can just go on PubMed, which is, uh, I'll link that up in the show notes as well. Why don't I do that? PubMed is the US National Library of Medicine, National Institute of Health. And what it does is it it is a resource for all the different peer-reviewed scientific studies. Now, I'm going to give you one of the abstracts. Okay, so this is not new information. This goes back years we've known this, but the difference is, and I couldn't use this in my practice, I could actually use it, then they took it away for the year of 2015, 2016. Now in 2017, we can use it again. CBD oil is legal in all 50 states. There is no psychoactive component to CBD oil. There's no TH is less than 0.5. People ask, can you test positive on a drug test? If people do more than three to five servings per day, typically more than five, a thousand times the recommended dosage, they can test positive on some drug tests that look for THC. I mean, because basically you're, you're taking such a large amount that anything could add up in your system. However, still in the research, it only triggered about 2% of all lab tests for marijuana. Now, the only people that would really be in danger would be anyone who's in drug rehab for alcohol, drugs in general, where they're going to actually test for cannabinoids as well, because they're doing a more in-depth test. That's not your typical test. But one or two servings per day, 
there, there should be absolutely no testing positive because again, there's no TH, there's not enough THC to test positive. Okay. So let's get back on track. I want to read you this short abstract and I'm going to give it to you in science terms and then in regular speak terms. So the abstract says this, cannabinoids derive substances in cancer therapy, an emerging anti-inflammatory role for cannabinoids. So what they're studying is the anti-inflammatory properties for cannabinoids, which help in cancer, but they also help with everything else that we just mentioned, the blood pressure, the skin, the psoriasis, the autoimmune. So cannabinoids, the active components of the cannabis plant. And again, I'm reading you the PubMed abstract have some clinical merit both as an anti-emetic and appetite stimulant in cancer-based patients. So recently, interest in developing cannabinoids as therapies has increased following reports that they possess anti-tumor properties. And I'll put in my own jumps along the way. Anti-tumor, meaning like it shrinks tumors or does not allow tumors to grow. Research into cannabinoids as anti-cancer agents is in its infancy. But again, keep in mind, this was six years ago, has mainly focused on the pro-apoptotic effects of this class of agent. A pro-apoptotic means that it signals cell death in cancer-based cells. Okay. Impressive anti-cancer activities have been reported. Actions that are mediated in large part by disruptions to ubiquitous signaling pathways such as ERK and PI3-K. Now, those are actual pathways which allow for tumor-based growth. Okay. It's disrupting those pathways, not allowing for that growth. However, recent developments have highlighted a punitive role for cannabinoids as anti-inflammatory agents. Chronic inflammation has been associated with neoplasia for some time. Neoplasia is essentially the abnormal growth of tissue, such as in cancer cells. And as a consequence, reducing inflammation as a way of impacting cancer presents a new role for these compounds. So it just basically goes into how using cannabinoids to fight cancer is now being studied more and more. And again, many, many research studies on this as well. So hopefully that made sense after I explained some of the medical jargon in there. And then the next one, cannabidiol or cannabinoids as an anxiolytic drug. So reducing anxiety. Okay. So the objective was to look at cannabinoids instead of drugs to figure out the mechanism of action as well as does it actually work. So what this revealed was that patients and volunteers taking CBD experienced the same anxiolytic effects as you would find with a regular drug. Pretty amazing. So it was shown to reduce anxiety in patients with social anxiety disorder. Okay, I want to do a follow-up to that. Cannabidiol reduces the anxiety induced by simulated public speaking and people who have social phobia patients. So this was remarkable. It took people with seasonal affective disorder, social anxiety, as well as anxiety in meetings, public speaking, any of those things, just being in social situations, which is about half of the people in my practice. I mean, honestly, there's some type of seasonal affective disorder, all of these things. And what it found was that cannabinoids, CBD oil, the same stuff that I'm talking about, beat the placebo. It was shown that people got a reduction in anxiety, cognitive impairment, discomfort in their speech performance, and they were more alert in more relaxed and in terms of anticipatory speech. So meaning like the thought of having to speak, you were just more relaxed. So I thought this was very impressive. Uh, and I know, again, uh, there's multiple studies for each of these things that I spoke about. So instead of me boring you with all of this science, I just want to show you that this is legitimate science. It works. Take away the stigma that you thought about cannabis. Use it to your benefit. There's probably a reason. Now, again, I'm not going to go conspiracy theory, but there's probably a reason that this has been withheld from us for so long. The medicinal properties, the properties of hemp as a food, clothing, fuel source are undeniable. And I'm hoping that we make up in the next decade what we lost for the past 50 to 100 years. I really do hope that that for everyone, for for the good of society. So now how do we use it? Well, to use CBD oil, and honestly, there's very few people that I would not recommend this for, and it's hard for me to think of anyone right now that I wouldn't. So if you're someone that wants to use it like I used it. Meaning like when I get home from work, 
and I did this started six months ago, I just want to say, can I be more relaxed? Can I be more present with my wife? Can I be more present with my children? Can I have a little bit more of a longer fuse? Can I just be more relaxed? So right when I got home, I took a half a dropper, sometimes a full, but I definitely did a half a dropper every time. That's 24.2 milligrams of cannabinoids. And again, most products are only five milligrams, which is why no one feels anything from those because they're not a high enough dosage. You need 10 to 20 milligrams minimum. So like autism, 20 to 50 milligrams, that's the dosage. But you put it right under your tongue. You keep it there for two minutes. I found that within 20 minutes, about 20 minutes later to 30 minutes later, there was a notable decline in stress. There was a notable decline in any type of tension in my muscles, which is where I hold it. I hold tension basically in my like thoracic area, which is my chest and my, my mid back between my shoulder blades. It just accumulates from, you know, a day of, of high tense work. You know, I love it. I do, but I have a large team. I see a lot of people who are very sick and I need to make sure that I can reduce that stress in my body. So anyway, it worked plain and simple. It worked. Why didn't you hear about it for me six months ago? Because I need to make sure that I'm giving you a good recommendation. I saw the research, but does this work in real life? I wanted to test it out. Okay. When else have I used it myself? Well, I I take a lot of flights. And on long flights, I don't believe in drinking alcohol on flights. It only further dehydrates you, weakens your immune system. You're already being exposed to everybody else's colds and sicknesses. I would take that, again, before I got on the plane or just when I got on the plane. And incredibly, it worked incredibly well. Now, for a lot of people, so I use it like that. I use it mainly before bed. Uh, a lot of people use it 30 minutes before bed to get into a deeper sleep. But again, in my practice and with a lot of people that I would recommend it to, they use it first thing in the morning when they wake up. That reduces their anxiety about the workday. It reduces their stress with the commute. It allows them to feel more even. And I think that's really great as well. And so what I want to say for you is depending on how you want to use it is how you should dose it. So for example, if yours is anxiety-based, when would it be best to use it? Well, about 30 minutes before you're in your most anxious state. So for me, when I got home, I used it right when I got home. That allowed me to be just more cool, calm, and collected at dinner with my family. It allowed me to kind of like push the day just aside. It allowed me, you know, during bath time with my kids to uh, just be, again, more present, more relaxed. And that helped me. And then obviously I got into a much deeper, more relaxed sleep, which is really what I appreciate it for. Now, if you're experiencing daytime anxiety, well, use it mid-morning. Use it before work. Use it right when you get to work. That's what I would recommend. I would recommend the 10 drops that start there. That's the half a dropper. It lasts for a month. It's just, it's a great, it's a, just a great, obviously, what I believe trial for yourself to, to try it out. Now, if you're situational, that's when you can use it as well. If you have autoimmune or inflammation, then you'll use it once to twice a day upon waking and then before bed. If you're just use, looking to use it in terms of inflammation and reducing a lot of the symptoms that I spoke about earlier on the show, that's how I would recommend it. For more specifics, do feel free to write in on the Cabral house call. But uh, that today's show was really in response to all of the massive questions that we got. You'll see that I didn't really answer too many on the Cabral house call. And the reason is I'm answering all of those on today's show. And hopefully that was enough to, to get you started, right? There's always more research, right? There's always more to do. But honestly, in my opinion, and you can get it from anywhere you want, just remember, there is no good source on Amazon. So there just isn't. Get it from your naturopathic doctor, get it from a functional medicine practitioner, or you can get it directly from us. If you get it directly from us, of course, it's coming from the same stuff that I would put in my body or my family's body. And that's from an organic based farm. It's from a small farm and they're using the highest extraction methods, the purest form available, low in THC. And it's also at the clinical dosage. Again, it's not like this so again, there's no offense to any of these other brands. They're just, I don't know what they're doing. Maybe just trying to make a little bit more of a profit. They're still giving you the product, but at five milligrams per dosage, that's not enough for a clinical effect. You need to be using 10 or ideally 20 milligrams or more of the cannabinoids of the CBD. And they try to confuse you with marketing saying hemp oil. Well, ours has hundred milligrams of hemp oil. Hemp oil is not what we're looking for. We're not, we're looking for CBD. We're looking for the, the cannabinoids in there. So anyway, 
What I'm going to do is just link everything up in the show notes, whatever feels right for you. That's always what I recommend doing for you. And again, if I can help in any way, if I can answer more questions, I'm happy to do that. And of course, I'll, I'll podcast more about this in the future, but we'll wait a few weeks or at least a couple months, most likely follow up to this because I believe that I've given enough information now. You can try it. You can see how it works for you. And uh, again, the success stories that we've had in our practice, but then just from people in general using it. And then obviously the peer reviewed studies are giving me enough confidence to say, this is the real deal. It has been for a long time now. We need to get this information out to more people. So as always, if, if you can do me this favor and simply spread the information, spread this information to anyone you believe it could help, really would appreciate that. Thank you one and all. I do appreciate it. We have just such an amazing community and, and I have you to thank for that. So thank you once again. Did you know that the body really only becomes sick or unbalanced in only two ways? Over time, you become deficient in vital nutrients and you also accumulate toxins internally and from the environment. As those nutrients diminish and you increase your total toxic load, your body then begins to show the first signs of dis-ease. It's actually quite predictable and the good news is that if we know how you began to fill up that proverbial rain barrel, we also know how to empty it to begin the healing process. I was fortunate enough to learn this ancient healing process from my mentor after suffering from debilitating diseases for close to a decade. It was only when I began to implement these techniques did I finally overcome my illnesses and go on to live a life of energy and vitality that I now enjoy. I'd like to share with you now what I discovered after traveling all over the world and how to combine the best of ancient healing wisdom with state-of-the-art science. Allow me to teach you exactly how I've been able to help over a quarter of a million people to empty their rain barrel and begin to transform their body and lives into what they've always hoped they could be. To get your copy of the international bestseller, The Rain Barrel Effect, simply go to stephencabral.com forward slash rain barrel.